What is going on, my doe brothers and my doe sisters? Today, welcome to the Gaggio Tournament, the Doe for Broke Tournament. I am here with Gaggio himself. Gaggio, how are you doing today? You know, Jerry, I woke up this morning, I saw the snow falling outside, and I said... It's time to get into this Doe for Broke replays, my man. Oh, it is time indeed. I've got my little hat on. I'm ready for the snow. It is cold. It is spicy. It uh -huh. is good to go. Whenever you are ready to start on these replays, I have been so excited to watch these. Uh, legit well, excited to watch these. let me just say real these. quick then, Jerry. Let me just say this real quick. I did this because I was so interested in figuring out who is the number one player. Let's take all of the card levels aside and let's just go by skill. We're going to find out right now. Get ready in three, two, one. Let's get into it. We got Be Happy against Marokowak. Let's see All how right. this one shakes out. I have played both of these players and I have lost plenty of times. I'm really excited about this because I actually do not know who wins any of these matches. So this is going to be, this is live for me. This is extremely exciting. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, live, these, every player that's played this, let me just say their heart was revving every single match because it's different than ladder. You can take a loss and it's no big deal. Here you take a loss and you're down. So it was exciting for everybody who participated. Personally, being someone who participated, I kind of had the shakes. I knew I wasn't going to beat McHolge, but I still, you know, had a little thought maybe, but <laughs> no. Just maybe. <laughs> just no. So I do want to say real quick, what's happening in this match? Marokowak is doing an old trick here. He's using the person eating plant to perfection. He'll chip down one of Be Happy's troops to very little health, leaving the person eating plant to just quick gobble it up. And that's huge. That's huge with the plant. You can't just have your plants eat a full level troop. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, but the percent of damage that it takes off can be worth it. I've seen a lot of really high skill plays with the person eating plant, and I've always personally loved the person eating plant. I think I play oh. too many of them sometimes, but I like that you can play it reactionary on top of a troop where a mine, you really have to play it ahead of time. Oh, man, oh. Jay, I think you missed it. Did you see that drill tron go on the wrong side? I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. So you can see Be Happy definitely has the shakes. He's nervous. He went and he knew he had a Drillatron a plant. He Drillatron the wrong plant. Dude. Oops. And, and again, they're both running Mammoth, so having these gobble. mines down is important. And these mm -hmm. plants. Gosh. And then if you're also watching along, you can see Marokowak. He has the sleight of hand to quick seize up a plant if it's not going to eat the troop right away. That's a one doe exchange to get another three doe plant on the field so four in total to eat the eight doe mammoth Good so trade. you're talking That's about using say. vanish on top of the person eating plant correct right right, right yes right. i've actually heard some people saying that that is a bug but whether it is a bug or not it is working in his favor it is but what you have to notice i noticed you didn't bring this up this is they're only using chippy cards to, to do tower damage and be happy has repair man dan that means any exchange that Marokuak does, he can rebound from. So we'll see what happens. It's going OT. And with person, and I see they're both running mine, correct? Yeah, they've both been putting mines down. This is just a this is just a slaughter field of person eating plants and mines, <laughs> as far as you can see. The drill comes in really handy for getting rid of the mines as well, with that positive doe kickback. But well, you've seen they've been placing them outside the towers so that the Drillatron can't just do that. Can't just take both of them. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, Repairman well, Dan is match. a big plus here. Got the barrier on Dan. Oh, oh, and he didn't get the yoink from Justice. Oh, placement oh, with fall, Justice man. is so important. Who you got in this match? Uh, right now, I got to say I got... Oh, I got marrow from what it looks like but i know be happy so well here comes a push oh didn't catch the mine tower's getting low oh the rage mini manders are mini -manders. just mini -manders extreme right. rage mini mander oh my goodness the rage mini mander i actually am doing a very i'm very excited about this mini mander video coming up the mini mander is my favorite card in the game right now but enough about me raged mini mander for the win dude it's a legit strategy it really is 
It really is. I mean, if you got two or three mini manners and you pop your rage tower, the damage you deal is unreal. And, and not also too many the people healing. Know so at level 10, the mini mander has 2,830 health and mm -hmm. it heals it to full health because the healing the tower does. So if you have four mini manders, you're getting about as much healing on those mini manders as you are on the commander. Now, mostly you don't have mini manders all down that low at one time, but here we go again with the mini mander. Oh, he's got the mammoth back. Yeah, Meryl, Meryl knew this time. He's like, let's get rid of the mini manders quickly. Otherwise, it's a problem. I'm clenching my fists over here right now watching this. I, I'm digging my nails into my hands. The plant is going, taking the health. <laughs> I do want to say, well, we got this kind of first minute going on. I really think Meryl screwed up in that last match. He should have dedicated to just taking that tower down no matter what happened. And he didn't. He pulled out because he got a little scared. And when you play these competitive matches you don't think as good i think that's the best way to put it you really don't you know i haven't seen a single taunt so far so people are no. all in on <laughs> nobody's playing mind games it's quite interesting oh god mind games are my favorite part of this game what, what's your favorite taunt jerry let's, my let's get favorite it taunt is the teabag but i never use oh. it because i'm afraid what? of people just going to i get people will if, sometimes people will send me a, a message like ah oh, the because you can message people in this game which i love i love that this game uh, allows you to communicate with people a lot more freely it's a little bit more of an adult game which i like that i don't want to say it's not for kids but there's enough strategy and enough comedy in it that i don't feel bad like i'm playing a child's game i really do feel like i'm playing an adult game this is a man's game it's right a man's here. game there it is it's a man's game Man, Mini, Man <laughs> Mini Mander helps so much to cap the barrel. Too, too much. Mini Mander is a problem. It's a legit problem. People snipe the Mini Mander too. I see pro players sniping the Mini Mander and he doesn't, I don't think he actually dies to an evenly level snipe. So he's actually a, he's like a mini tank. Skurger mm -hmm. says he's a cycle card. You just cycle him anytime, all good. It is, it is. I mean, you'll see in these matches, I hate to spoil them, but there's a few players that do what I call the the snowball effect of mini manders. They'll just keep dropping them, dropping them, dropping them, dropping them. And as overtime hits, they march with five or six to the tower on a mission to just plug it down. Oh, and I'm sorry, be happy. Do some huge tower damage right here. Massive. Um, any little chip is important because I don't think Marrow had Repairman Dan. He does not, and is only one of them running justice? I'm trying to see right now. Yeah, but in uh, Be Happy's doing it, but in a Nightfall match, justice is useless. Useless, yes. Oh, oh this boy. is where it's going to get exciting here. It's over. Oh, it's over. Drill to the back. I forgot he had drill to cycle. Good game. Good game, Be Good Happy. Good game, Be Happy. I mean, the reason why we probably didn't commentate that one as much, Be Happy capitalized on what he did in game one. He just slowly and surely healed his towers and did damage to Meryl. So Meryl now is in a panic. He's in a tizzy. Nothing he's done has worked. So he's going to bring up entirely new deck. Be happy. He's going to bring the same thing. Let's see what happens. This is exciting. This is the most excitement I've ever had doing this, Gaggio. Your commentary on this is beyond professional. And I am just like a kid in a candy store here getting to watch who's the best player in the world. Do we have Nightfall? They're going to be able to Nightfall. We do not have it in cycle. I don't think we have it in the deck. That inhumane cannonball is getting repaired by Repairman Dan. It was huge. That, that was cannonball nasty. would have went down, but he used so much dough to save it. He's got There's nothing the for his mammoth. Huge Ooh. mistake. Actually, isn't that nuts? It's better to have some dough saved up um, than to get caught with your pants down, you could say. Absolutely. <laughs> go Absolutely. Mammoth knocked half the tower down, and we're only two, one minute in. You always like have to punish those big commitments when especially there hasn't been a positive trade. The Mammoth really had a chance to take over, especially oh. with the Mammoth, because it is a little bit yeah, of a high risk, high reward. Man, and we missed the yoink there from Sheriff Justice. Right over the mine, look, he would have been yoinked. Marrow is now copying Be Happy. He said, you got Repairman Dan? I'm going to use Repairman Dan. But if you're not good with that card, it doesn't work out to your favor, quite honestly. Yeah, I've tried cycling the card, and it's not really a cycle card. You really have to know what you're doing with that card. Oh, and the discombobulate right in front of the tower. Mm-hmm. But you got your boy, Mini Manders. Yeah, Rage Mini Manders, ending the world. Boom. Took it.
you know, one Minimander can make a difference. Let's remember that, guys. <laughs> So the Minimander does around half the damage that a buck does, but when you rage the Minimander, it gets multiplied substantially. So you could be there with just a few Minimanders, but as soon as you pop rage, it's like you have four bucks on the tower. Uh, he almost does as much damage as a Psy buck when he's raged. So a raged Minimander is, is a complete problem, especially with how much health the Minimander has. You can't just... He's not squishy by any means. Ooh, and the mine gets caught there. Yeah, I was about to say, that was a good punish by Mero. He's like, you feeling cocky? You're going to try to take me down? Well, guess what? Here's a B mine. I'm going to start killing you. But he had his health tower ready to go, so be happy he didn't take that much of a loss. It could have been could have been gnarly, though. Let's be honest. Absolutely. And because we're watching from Be Happy's perspective, we can see that he's got those two mines down there, so he is ready if the... If Marrow tries to make an aggressive push with the commander, he's just going to get yoinked into that center Yoink. area there. Yoink him. Oh, I love the sheriff. I love the sheriff. Let's I do real. love That's the sheriff. Absolutely. I almost felt he was overpowered when he got introduced, but I figured you just got to kill. You just got to kill him. You can't try to run away. You got to take care of sheriff. Had him well countered. Good Had game. Had him well countered. Be happy. Good game, man. You, you showed your stuff, and you took down Marokuwak, who was no slouch. He was the number one seed. Be happy he was only the 13th seed. My dude's marching on to the grand final. All right. Next up, this... we got Old Mullen versus Sweaty. Sorry to cut you off the tree, Wiz. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm just saying that Old Mullen, some people know him as Attack. It took me a while That's to right. realize that Old Mullen was Attack. But yes, I'm so excited. I love his streams. I love Sweaty's channel. These are two players that I really am excited about this match. And I don't know how to call it. I know from I know that Old Mullen, who was, who was favored in this match? Well, technically, O Mullen, because he was the two seed, you know? But Sweaty's play has been so strong and so solid, it's hard to bet against him. I call this one very even, and you're going to see why when we go through these matches. Both of them bringing Mrs. Rex, which blew my mind. Hmm. I have not seen Miss Rex in a long time, and the fact that both of them are doing it, dude. That is, well, that is insane. That? that is actually very insane that they... <laughs> And it's the first match, too, so they're not copying each other. They both no. chose this as their opening deck. That is insane. Mm-hmm. Especially with so much di uh, Disco Ray around. going around. There's so many things that can cause a problem for Mrs. Rex. I've always liked Rex and Mrs. Rex as cards. I think they're unique to this game. You got Old Mullen kind of screwing up here. He had those two Piranha spawners ready to go, and he was not doing damage to the tower, taking that health for them. So he lost a potential push there. Just want to say. Suffered. And we don't see Drill in the deck, so that Piranha tank is just bringing it. Mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of Drill. You like Drill? I think it's extremely strong, and I'm currently using it because I'm doing... A, I upgraded the Command Ad skin just to try to see how many times I can get it to work for me. And, and the 5% extra damage from the Command Ad skin really isn't anything fun yet, but at max level, it's 30% extra damage. And I've noticed it also buffs uh, the damage to things like Discombobulator Ray, so the skin may be useful. That's why I'm using Drill. I think Drill is helpful for stopping building play, uh, but I do think it's a sort of a rock, paper, scissors card where it erases buildings a little too easily, but... The game is working for me, so I, I don't love the card, but I don't hate the card. We've got two Mama Rexes down. Whoa. Okay, Sweaty just knew he had to get that egg. That was a weird teleport. Oh, and he didn't get it! Oh! Oof. Yeah, there you go. I told you it was weird. I, I'm not, I don't feel too confident about Sweaty's chances now all of a sudden. That, that could be a game changer, as little as it is. Especially trying to catch the Rex Egg when you don't catch the Rex Egg, because not only have you overcommitted now, you've, you've missed the entire point of what you did. And I notice a lot of times those Rex Eggs, even though it seems like you got it, they still pop open anyways, or you think you caught it halfway in time and you still end up with the small Rex coming down. Massive push from O Mullen coming over here. Oh, and the airstrike. That was oh. so clutch. <laughs> and that erases the damage done with that bad teleport. Wow. So we're in good shape. But what O'Mullen is doing, this is a punishing play. I don't know what it's called. I keep calling it the Disabler Ray. Um, but he keeps putting it on the health tower. So Sweaty has just no chance to heal himself and can't play aggressive with his commander. But this is just madness at this point. Look at this. Madness. Absolute madness. 
The I'll Caveman is such an impressive card, too, for only two, though. There's so much use for the Caveman. He just had a Caveman and a major fire on the tower, but O'Mullen's health is so low right yeah. now. And Sweaty cycling for his teleport. Watch his bottom cards. Oh, He's yeah. trying to get the teleport going so he can dive in, I bet. Oh, what a victory that would be. Oh, oh, oh. Nope, not yet. Oh. He's, he, he popped his rage. He's going. There it is. There it is. There's Boom. a teleport. He's in the back. He's got yep. the boom. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, cheers. You need a victory flute on that one. Good job, Sweaty. Oh, dude. Do you got the victory flute? I can, I can, I can sneak back there. We'll wait for the fight. I can, I think I can get it. We'll wait for the final, the actual victor. <laughs> I can get the flute. I'm, I'm honestly, this is just me talking. I'm having so much fun watching this right now. And I know O'Mullen, I, I watch his streams. I know he's probably going so hard right now because he's such a skilled player and he's not going to take that loss lightly. No, he's definitely not. Um, and, and quite honestly, I don't know how he did it. The Miss Rex kind of, like just makes the screen so hard to read. So the stress of the game mixed with how hard the screen is to read just probably led him to lose more health than he realized, which is costing the game. That's my guess, at least. You know, and that's one of the things I love about this game is that you not only have to have a great strategy like other games of this style, but you also have to remember that even if you are winning, you can lose in an instant if you don't have total awareness of the map. And that's one of the things Miss Rex does is cause complete chaos. Seemed yeah. like that was one of the strategies was cause chaos. So we got a little B mine action now from nice. Old Mullen. I believe he completely switched up his deck for his aggressive style deck. Uh, I just got to see a few more of the card cycle before I can tell you for sure. But Sweaty with the Mammoth. We see the Mammoth all the time. Can't and he's also it. running he's also running Piranhas, which is interesting. I see him. I yeah. see. I saw him drop the Piranhas on top of the mine back there, which was a good mine placement by O'Mullen. Yeah, Sweaty wasn't trying to mess around. He said, I'll do a two-doe exchange so my Mammoth can wreak some havoc. Smart. Actually, you're right. That's what was happening. I thought he had played the mine. I thought O'Mullen played the mine to keep the piranhas, but it was Sweaty playing the mine so he could get his... I mean, Sweaty playing the piranhas so he could get the mammoth in there. Man, that mammoth just got chewed up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, O'Mullen's tactic here, I love it. I, I normally run it with jetpack. I don't see him with jetpack here, but all of his cards are under four dough. He's just trolling B-mine, Nightfall, Caveman, uh, Yetilings... Uh, whatever the flamethrower guy is just so we can keep putting damage on the towers or the enemy commander The enemy commander can't react fast enough if his cards are too high level though And that's what's going on here. Sweaty is on his heels the whole match Yeah, absolutely. O'Mullen's using his commander extremely aggressively staying on top of his barrel uh, Most of his cards like you mentioned are under four dough So he's just able to move through his deck and shut down the mammoth Yeah, mammoth basically shut down. I mean how many times has Sweaty tried to pull the Mammoth in this match and he only has half of the Rage Tower down? It's not a good look. And O'Mullen is punishing. He's and it doesn't even seem like he's tower. got a win condition or something that should be killing the Commander. The Commander's no, health is nothing. impressively low for not having oh, something. And this is it. Poison. Poison. <laughs> oh, game. God. Wow. Man, that's really interesting. If I were to look at that deck at the beginning and say that he's going to focus on killing the Commander with this deck, I would say how. But it just happened. We just saw it. Oh, he, he just focuses on doing damage. He doesn't, in the beginning of the match, he's not sure if he's going to go after the towers or the commander. It's up to how his opponent plays. So Sweaty was trying to play aggressive. Let's just, let's just kill the commander. No big deals. And that's it. That's it. That's how it runs. I just uh, watched a video one... this morning from 10 tips from the creator, uh, Hyro, actually, and that was one of his tips was that you can totally switch up your style to going for the commander, even if your deck doesn't seem like a deck that could go for the commander. There's so much I still have to learn about this game coming from Clash Royale, and it really does seem like some of these players have already made the change completely, and there's a, a, a format to this game that we're getting to watch these players use right now that is it really feels like pro gameplay. It is pro, because who uses Mr. Poof? <laughs> like who uses Mr. Poof and he's running Mr. Poof Zeppelin I've seen this deck many times I gotta be honest if you haven't tried it try it because it's way easier than you think to win with Mr. Poof and Zeppelin 
<laughs> so he kind of used Mr. Poof as a tank there for Zeppelin, didn't he? Yes. Yes. You can send a Zeppelin and a Tower Disabler on one side and Mr. Poof on the other side. If you successfully take down the tower on the left side, Mr. Poof is kind of keeping the other one at bay, so Zeppelin can just try to take two at once. You know, a little two for one. Absolutely, yep, and Mr. That. Poof will just keep that tower completely tied up, which is, I guess, maybe one of his best uses. I know we've got a Bear Trap on that other side. Bear Trap is a card that I, I'm actually loving right now. I think it's a smart, smart card, and it's fun to play with. I have not messed with it yet. Bear Trap you and know, Justice I I are it. wonderful. I have so much fun with Bear Trap Mine and Justice as sort of a... A, a trap deck, almost. You're wrangling up those enemies. You know, it's the only way I have to beat higher level players than me, because I think I'm capitalizing on their mistakes when they play a little too aggressive because they see the name and they go, oh, I'm gonna beat beat this guy, and then uh, and then they get yanked <laughs> into the middle. Sheriff, Ju But people have caught on to Sheriff Justice uh, quite a bit. All right, we've got a Discombobulate Major Fire. That is the key to taking out a Killbot. Yeah, so let me break down here. So as you saw in the beginning, O'Mullen was able to push very well. And that's because Sweaty's playing a late game deck. He's playing Killbot. So you know in the back half of the game, he's going to come out even stronger than the front half. At the same time, um, O'Mullen is realizing the Minimander strat is going on. So he's disabling the Rage Tower over and over again so he doesn't get that Minimander push we were talking about. Smart. Mm-hmm. Is very smart. The but Minimander the and the time, Killbot go together keep so him at well. Bay, though. Oh, he there took they out go. The yep. Absolutely. It is worth using Rage to take out a swarm of Minimanders. Oh, here's his push for the win potentially. Yep. We've got the tower shut down. He's got his Minimanders. Oh, wow. Oh boy. Wow. Oh, this is exciting though. We've got Chompers out on the field. Yeah, I, I haven't decided about this overtime yet. I did make a video on it because it's it's hellaciously fun while you're playing, but I don't think it helps decide matches that often. I think it just is a is a fun effect that just prolongs uh, an even exchange match. That's a great point. I completely agree. I do think it's fun. I like everything about it, but for some competitive thing like this where we're wearing our underpants skin, uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Because if we... Uh, skins would have made such a difference in this, but I, I love that you made the rules where people are not using skins. We really were trying to see, you were trying to see who's the greatest, uh, and who the skin, the, the skin's underpants skin causes that to be a factor. This is pure skill. Uh, and I, I have teased the second tournament to this point. We might flesh it out more in the coming, you know, week. Uh, but for right now, we're just all about skill. And Was Punisher Sweaty's in this tournament? He was. I, I believe he went out by the hands of O'Mullen. Oh, so O'Mullen's the greatest player in the world yeah, at the moment. Probably go find out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, O'Mullen is putting on a clinic right now as to how not to get killed by Killbot. I this say is that. insane. Yeah, there's three Killbots three marching down the field. O'Mullen's playing for the draw at this point. He knows there's literally nothing he can do because Poof is poofing. <laughs> immediately <laughs> oh man yeah so right now the series is one and one uh sweaty is trying to take that tower though to make it two one this is a high stress moment mm-hmm and O'Mullen disabled his rage tower i think if he had the rage tower and was able to pop it this one would have went sweaty wow. but it doesn't what a way to hold on yeah that's how you hold down the fort so it's one one, one. This is as even of a match as it gets. Sweaty has got to be sweaty at this point. Well, I think he, if, if coming from someone who's played these a couple times, because I did match up against guys in Crazy Waterfall, you get mad. Like, you get so mad whenever you were supposed to win, but you couldn't finish it for some reason. Um, so Sweaty's coming with the Killbots, and he's coming to take O'Mullen's head in this one. Let's be real. And O'Mullen knows that's the case. He's bringing the Miss Rex deck. Um, yep, it looks like O'Mullen has dropped why, his though. bear trap. And I noticed the last the last match, we never saw any commanders get stuck in the bear trap. And with you mentioning mistakes, that's the reason I would get wins with bear trap, is I think it, it, 
if they could have targeted the bear trap, the commander would have been able to escape, but it can be very difficult to target the bear trap when you're stuck in it. It's much more difficult oh, yeah. than catching a mine, and I think a lot of the, the players, when first introduced to it, wouldn't know what to do, and I think that's why it was a little frustrating at the beginning. But, yeah, losing that a match a to a misclick play. or not having that rage ready or a shutdown going down really does make oh, you mad. Large tower disable. Oh, my God. Oh, look I'm at sorry. this, Rex. Oh. Again. Did you even see any of that? Uh, Sweaty thought he had him beat with a Yeti-ling, uh, but he was able to keep chunking that tower, quite obviously. Rex so, had, like, oh, one health. The seat. Yeah, and duct tape wasn't a thing in this, was it? Nobody was really running duct tape because it looked like that Rex had duct tape on it, but he was just tape. hanging. Mm -hmm. Oh man, if he had duct tape. <laughs> I don't even know if we should talk about duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> real real friends don't talk about duct tape. You know who's the, Ooh, who caught Nolan that witch? Is, Did it get Nolan up? is one of the best at not killing the witch. I swear. I, if you if you saw that as we were talking, if you drop a witch and he's raging, he will literally stop immediately and not kill the witch. He I don't understand how he didn't kill it. You're totally right. I guess one of the piranhas must have taken the last hit. He stopped clicking. He quick clicked off. Like wow. he's fast with his fingers. That's all it is. I've also seen him play with blue stacks where he's playing on his computer clicking with a mouse, but he said that he um, prefers to play on his iPad, not the not the computer. You know, then this is why I'm at a disadvantage. I keep playing on my phone only. Yeah, man, I play on an iPad. iPad. It's the iPad. You just I wait. <laughs> iPad makes a difference. So does Killbot. Oh. Oh. Yeah, O'Mullen seems to be on his heels on this one, but I feel like he has to have some sort of a plan. Once he gets... Oh, we're, we're already in double elixir, and Mrs. Rex is going to have a hard time with these Killbot. You see him pushing the Killbot? That's such a pro mm -hmm. move. Yes, it is. Skurger was Can't the first person I heard mention that, was that you can push the killbot around and use it like a like a tank. Yeah, battering ram. Give him a little boop. <laughs> Cause he moves so slow. That's the if you you could teleport him all day long if you wanted. Uh, we're in the snowy overtime here, so you know what that means. Whoever has the lowest health on their tower is kind of doomed. So O'Mullen is in a panic mode right I now. like this overtime quite a bit. I like it, this one and the poison one a lot, but I do like this overtime. You really see people going. It, it, they're, they're great how they're kind of opposites of each other. One pushes people into the middle of the map. One pushes someone back and causes someone else to play more aggressively. O'Mullen's tower right now, you are right. He is in trouble. He's got his That's second piranha burst. tank down. Yep. Old Mullen knew. Witch yep. curse on the tower. GG's. Let's call it. And that means Sweaty just got him again. Wow. Th these kill bots, they make you... You kind of don't panic in the first minute. Because you remember, Rex was killing that tower. It was looking like all things Old Mullen. Stage 3 kill bots got out there. Old Mullen had nothing. Nothing. Uh, what's your opinions on the kill bot? Do you think he's balanced? Yes, I do. Only because you can stop a killbot deck with troop trap. If the other person does not have troop trap, um, then <laughs> you countered it. I like to One hear card. you say that because I feel like like killbot is okay. I don't have a problem killing killbot. I love the card. I have a lot of people say that they do think that he should be able to receive some damage while he is inside of his shell, or that. Mm. Things like jetpack should have a timer, but personally, I think it adds spice to the game. These these certain aspects that you have to deal with. Yeah, there you go, jetpack. You just counter killbot. There you go. Yep, <laughs> it happens to I me mean, all the time. It's is it overpowered? Yeah, because it can just start gobbling up any troop on the field. But that's what makes the game so balanced. That's why we allowed people to change decks in between matches. Because yes, you can get direct countered but if you are a high skill player even when directly countered when you pull off a win it's insane and you can see O'Mullen is not having it with the kill bot anymore yep What's he he's in the air is exactly what that's we're talking right. about that's right he said I'm in the air if you want to bring it again great if not whatever um, he's using again a low cycle deck that he has success his only win with and he needs it because if he loses one more time, this is over. He had a great move there, taking out Mrs. Rex, taking out the egg, and he's just staying in the air here. He's got that tower tanked so we can see if Major Fire gets in. Mm -hmm. uh, Sweaty's going to take out Major Fire, but he's got another Rex down. I wonder if he's going to land. Not at all. I got no chance that O'Mullen hits the ground. All right. 
no rear entry at all. He's just going to stay up and not cycle that fourth card in his deck. I can see that. That makes sense. We got two cavemen down. I mean, he's stopping any Rex egg from popping out. So Mrs. Rex is kind of a useless card walking around. Absolutely. Sweaty needs to stop playing it because he is going to tear it up. But I don't know that Sweaty had another win condition. I got to see these cards cycle one more time. I think he had airstrike, and that was about it. And with the nerfs on airstrike, it's not a card you win with anymore. It's almost just a nice accent to anything. Absolutely. It's not a spell cycle card. And I've learned that from trying to use the Command Dad skin is that it is very difficult to win, especially since they changed the missiles as well, the magic missiles. But yeah. I don't have a problem with any of it. I think the game's standing in a pretty good place. I would say that Omon's win condition is his piranhas, yes. And they are getting taken out by the airstrike. But his tower his is still commander. shut down, so he's still got a benefit. And we are yeah, going for chompers this one over is, time. It's very strange. If you're very... Uh, if you're very aggressive with the two doe disabler ray, yeti lings, piranhas, your commander, jetpack, you can somehow just aggressively push your way to taking a tower. It's it's magic. It's honestly. happening. He just that? even shut down repairman Dan. He's just sitting there. No, and he's literally stayed in that spot. Like you said, he's just sitting there, just winning. <laughs> he's just sitting there winning. Because the commander he's not is the key. Wow, tower. he's got that tower shut down. Wow, what is even going on? It looks like he's just frozen. Yeah. And the yeah. number nine is just damage. frozen. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good oh game. my so he throws lord. In the that makes it two, two, one. That makes this your final match. All right, we got a doe barrel down. He's got Sheriff Justice. O'Mullen's bringing Justice Major Fire. He's got the bear trap again. I want to see he the does. commander get caught in the bear trap. We'll find out. I mean, here's the bad news for O'Mullen, though. Sweaty is bringing a killbot deck, which is what he has had the most success with. I talked to both players after this match, and O'Mullen brought this deck. I guess he made a promise to somebody that he something about he wouldn't use the same deck twice in a row or he would always he would change to this deck it was something weird like that um hope that doesn't give anything away you know i like the deck that omolan is running and it does seem like he maybe was thinking that you weren't gonna see another killbot because he switched away from that Killbot defense deck, and now he has Nightfall, which only benefits the Killbot. Mm -hmm. And Nightfall doesn't really work hand in hand with Sheriff Justice and the Bear Trap, does it? No, it does not. Absolutely not. Even when you're trying to use the... Uh, I, I have the Mini Mander in a deck like that, and you also cripple your Mini Mander in those times. So I really only like Nightfall if you're going to use it. I, I like a Killbot Nightfall cycle deck, but we've got the Mini Mander on the barrel. Sweaty's catching up on Doe. And like, look, he's even using Sheriff Justice in the middle of the map. He has nothing in the back um, to, to support Sheriff Justice. Like, what is that, man? Yeah, that Justice was not the correct play. The Yetlings, too, are extremely powerful because they actually stop a unit from attacking and not slow the unit. There's another mm -hmm. Disco Major Fire. That is the easy. That is a very easy way to take out a Killbot. Yeah, so O'Mullen is still pushing and able to take out the Killbot, which is a great thing. But the problem is, Sweaty has... What do I want to say? Sweaty has the most tower damage going on right now. So, I don't know. What are your feelings? Is this one even, in your opinion? Sweaty's deck has the advantage for sure, especially with the way that he's playing, because if O'Mullen is going to get a victory, he's going to need to have a chance to lay down that bear trap, and he's got two justice in his deck. I would like to see that used. Yank him all the way across the map. That would be <laughs> pretty cool. But yeah, the, I think... Justice is the key here, and we haven't had any successful justices, so he's at a major disadvantage right now. No, Sweaty knows that when Sheriff is at play, you want to stay in the back of the map. He's doing just that, and he's taking away the biggest win condition that O'Mullen has. 
Sweaty is using a deck style that I have been playing with and uh, having a lot of fun with, where you use the mini manders on the dough barrel, you use your kill bot to keep them from getting to you, and then you make use of the mini manders when you need to. Now we've got less healing, so oh, Molin, oh, see, those, uh, you don't want to take justice in like that. You have, placement with justice is the most important thing because if he doesn't get the yank, he was a useless card to play. Clutch move, clutch move. I don't know if you saw, but O'Mullen discoed the witch real quick just so no curse damage was done. So he wow. did just save himself, gave himself a chance at this one. Sweaty just got a heal on those mini manders. All three of the mini manders were close to death. All three of the mini manders received healing. They have over 3,000 health at max damage, so that was nine, almost 9,000 healing done to his mini manders. And then you <laughs> freeze the justice here, and he's gone. Yetlings are so, no matter what you do to them, they're, they're a viable card. Dude, they're so good. Yeti Lings, uh, you know, if you don't know what to put in your deck, if you've got seven cards, drop Yeti Lings. You can Let's split them in the back. You can get rid of mines. It's all right. You so this is actually, group. yep. There, there, okay. there. It looks like Sweaty has a very clear advantage because it's going to be difficult to stop this push, and we can't get Here's any healing. Oh, oh. You know, it doesn't even matter that Sheriff Justice yanked oh. the commander because mini manders don't get yoinked. <laughs> <laughs> in just a few shots. Quick. All right. So what we've learned so far is the mini manager strat, try it. Try it. Uh, and this is now our third place matchup before we get to the grand final, which is going to be Sweaty against Be Happy. We have third place O'Mullen versus Marokuwak. And these are two, I would call them old heads in the game. They've played a long, long time. They have a long history of battling each other. So that means these ones are going to be electric. You're going to like these ones. I guarantee it. I am excited and I cannot believe, I guess this doesn't sound good, but I would not have picked Sweaty and Be Happy to be the final matchup. That is very Isn't that impressive. Isn't that nuts? That is nuts. I'll put links in the description under my video for those two channels. Make sure to check out all these players. These players make this game better because, you know, Ooh. it's fun to play sports, but most of us watch sports, and you need pros if you really want to watch it for a long time. This, is this has been, honestly, this is right now my favorite my favorite World War Doe experience. We need more of these tournaments. We need more pros. We need more commentators. Well, oh, that's the see, good justice. What that, there what it is. Just that's now? the trap. Um, yep. It's so hard to target the trap beneath you. And when you do, it still has over 3,000 health. So it takes quite a while to get that trap down. Yeah, he can't escape. I wonder if oh. Repairman Dan could repair new the trap. Oh, There's oh, a new oh, sheriff oh. in town. <laughs> duct tape on him. D oh, Doesn't he's got matter, duct tape. It. Oh, he's... Oh. Yes! <laughs> Yoink! Oh, two He's justices! Gone, Yeehaw! He's gone. That's how oh, you man. do it. Two sheriff justices. Come on, dude. O'Mullen's a, O'Mullen's a cool guy. I'm sure he's just coming hard right now, too. This is, this is after his loss from the last round, yeah, right? Yeah, he was pissed. He said that he wanted to use jetpack so bad in that last match, but for some reason, he wanted to stay true to his word, and he didn't use it. So... You know, kudos to him for being a stand-up guy, but I would have loved to see O'Mullen bring the jetpack and say, hey, Sweaty, you can't just beat me with Killbot like that. I'm better than that. Yep, and that's why I asked your opinion on Killbot because I get so many victories. I don't want to give anything away. I've, posted, I've gotten a few victories on players I should not have gotten victories from, and it's using the strategy that Be Happy used. Killbot, Mini Mander. Uh, oh. Before we keep going, yeah, we got we to gotta talk yeah. about this. What an unfortunate split. You want both mammoths on the same tower, um, unless this works out to his advantage. Okay. That's a strategy I don't play often. You want both mammoths on the same tower. You might not think yes, that. That's, that's interesting. Yes, that's an unfortunate clown car split. And he's duct taping the clown car, which is so hard to stop, especially with lab coat. But no one's yeah, wearing lab coat. Fuck. He was just like, you know what? I'm I'm taking a cheek, cheeky, easy win right here. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> All right. Mero. Boy, yeah, this is always right no back. fun. He's like, oh, Mullen, if you're going to bear trap, double Sheriff Justice me down. <laughs> I'm going to, oh, <laughs> sorry. I thought I put my phone on Do Not Disturb, but he's like, if you're going to do that to me, I'm going to hit you with the duct tape invisible clown car. And he didn't have mines to stop it. That would have stopped it. Those I really think. are two like cheese type strategies, but that's honestly what I love about this game because they're not no skill strategies. They just, when you lose to it, it you just feel like, man, this this was such a loss because you really didn't lose by much. You lost by the clown car opening, but whether the clown car opens or whether justice gets you in that back corner can really make you feel like you got cheesed. 
for the gambling man. <laughs> oh, oh Mullen, I like what he did there. He's like, you think I'm gonna lose without taking at least one tower? That's not, you know. <laughs> you gotta show his stuff. Is he duct taped? Yeah, he's duct -taped. He's duct -taped. He's clowning. He's clowning. He's like, you can't kill me that easy, Mero. You can't kill me that easy, Mero. All right, so do you think he's going with the clown car again? Because when you know they have I clown car. No. I would say no, because Omolin's going to be prepped for it. Yeah, yep. he doesn't have it. But what a smart play by Mero, because now he knows that Omolin may be playing a deck for defending against the clown car, and he's not going to bring the clown car. That's right. I should say, one of the biggest takeaways from the competitive play is if you win game one, it means so much because now the opponent is reacting to what you do. Good point. And you can you can have a little bit of illusion in what you're going to bring next. If you play it safe and bring the same deck, you're playing with fire. But whatever you bring next, they might not have a counter for. And that's huge. We're both on the barrel. We've got two mines on the left side. Yeah, it's hard to tell um, in which way they're trying to play right now. It looks like they're both just little chunker decks, except for Mero, who believes that a Jack Pack might be in play because he's got Giggles. Yep, I see that. Which Giggles is great at taking out Jet Pack or anything in the air for that matter. But if they don't have an air card, he's still not pointless. I've had good luck with him as a card. They're both running Drill. You asked me what I thought about Drill. What are your thoughts on Drill? I hate it. I think he's useless. Oh, gotcha. You think it's weak. It's a four dough card. How often do you really see buildings? And if you see buildings, it's probably a Greevil deck. Drill doesn't really help against Greevil. I have lost several times to Skurger. He'll, he'll cycle Drill when he realizes he has no way to get to the tower, and he does a good job of getting rid of mines with it because it's actually an even trade when you take out a mine. But yeah, still, to put it in your deck with not many... When, when Buck Spawner, when Porta Potty was everywhere... It was a good card. Sorry, I'm trying to watch this. There's the drill for the it end. It does about 20, it does about 3,000 damage at max level, I believe. Oof, big mine. Big mine going off. I, I think if there's any card in the game right now that might need an adjustment, it's B mine, in my opinion. That's what I think. I, I don't think Sheriff Justice is overpowered. It's what he's pulling you into that is overpowered. <laughs> yes. Yes, a high-level B mine card basically makes aggressive style play impossible. Unless you got jetpack. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, uh, geez. Yeah, they had a little bit of a bad connection on this one. Uh, personally, I don't think it affected the outcome at all. Plus, it was third place. This was just for fun. Um, Marokuak, he he put a clinic on, was able to take that first tower, and it was the health tower. And O'Mullen is playing an aggressive deck. So without his health, his deck style becomes pretty bad if you're just going to hang in the back. And that's what we see. Yep, we saw that caveman on top of the commander. That's a play you see a lot that gets a lot more commander damage than you would expect. Oh, he went close to that mine over there. Mm-hmm. Oh! You might as well. You might yep. as well. Yep. <laughs> Go down. There, there it is. is. The club to the head. Cheers, O'Mullen. baby. Club to the head. All right, so this is this is now the fourth game. Marrow's up 2-1 against your boy O'Mullen. God, Gio, I feel like you're taking me on a journey terrible. right now. This is so much fun for me. Dude, it's such a journey. I was going to ask, how are you feeling? We've been I'm feeling about so good. We need to do this uh, t all the time. This is great. Well, we can ask for the comments here if, if people have watched this far. The next tournament I do, I would love to have everyone vote for three cards they'd like banned. The top three cards voted for will be mm. banned. And then each match, you can include one extra ban for your opponent. And I thought it'd be fun for the opponent to choose a card that you had to include in each deck you played. But people weren't too keen on that. I do think that's good rules. Um, I think it's good to change it up as well. But if we could get these same players in, I would even care if it was the same rules because I know the outcome would be different, especially as the balance things changes. This tournament came on the heels of a balance change, which uh, Sheriff Justice was new, Bear Trap was new, Duct Tape was new. So a lot of things could be, uh, people may not have been used to dealing with Bear Trap or Sheriff Justice so when we saw that easy Sheriff Justice win. Help Tower Ooh, down how quick do you about by O'Mullen. He had, he had dough there to use. I don't know why he pulled out. 
because he could have stopped that heel from going down. Um, maybe he just got a little too nervous. He is down at this point, so he has to stay alive. Yeah. I guess he, he figured it, he'll cycle around and, and get damage on that. No big deal. And Rab, Rab is out there going crazy because he sees a Cybuck in the match. We Heard that. that. <laughs> and Cybuck <laughs> didn't teleport to the tower there. Uh, I, I was surprised about that because it's usually between it 4 killed. and 20 range you see him teleport. Mm -hmm. We got a reset. True. We all got a reset. Even Cybuck. <laughs> Even, yeah, even Cybuck needs a day off every Man, once in a while. Man, Prana's on the tower. There it goes. Mm -hmm. right, he's got yeah. this tower with so Rage. Here... Prana's on the tower. There it goes. Does it go? So here's something interesting to note. Oh, it's duct tape. Duct I tape. hate duct tape. And it missed? Did the duct tape miss? Oh, he duct taped the tower. He gotcha. duct taped the tower. Shit. Wow. Ugh. Man. So, so, this is a tough one. We know that heal tower is going down eventually, right? Um... That's my first so, time seeing somebody use duct tape to milk an extra heal. Yeah, it, it could be the difference. I mean, Omullen is is great at avoiding death, though. Look you at how much damage that duck, uh, that that tower. It's just like those bees should have shredded an entire tower. Definitely should have shredded it. But he takes the tower. And he's gonna send it into overtime. He gets hit with another mine. Such a well placed mine by Marrow. Uh, who's like going for the kill and his moves are so tactical and so smart. I don't want to say that they're not. Oh, geez, Giggles. Oh, oh. Giggles is still on the ground coming for him. I like that I love march. The way he walks. Giggles has the best walk in the game. This is my first time seeing it and I completely agree. This is the first time you've seen him walk around? Yeah, huh? I, I, usually he dies before he walks around. Oh wow, yeah, Amon's got his health yeah, back. This is this is awesome. Yeah, so I mean, Tic Tac, they know they want to take each other's tower, which is interesting. They're not really going after each other, but the poison. Yeah, he's in the poison there. That was a that was a rough rough call going in the poison marrow. But at the same time, you gotta avoid Mr. Giggles. Oh yeah. You do take poison damage even when jetpacked. Gotta say that. Oh, there it is. Tower oh, smash. Oh, is he going to take it? Here we go. It? Come on. Come on. Come on. Pull it out. Pull it out. He pulled out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? Would you have stayed? I don't know. And he's duct got tape, it. Baby. Oh, duct tape on the tower. Be mine. Oh, God. Oh, and he's <laughs> running from giggles. How do you even watch? I can't. I'm watching, and I can't keep up. They're oh. playing all that. Oh. You see that? He timed the rear entry right when this duct tape ended. <laughs> oh, man. We need like a slow replay on that one. Yeah, actually, would, that would be really what, cool a half to have. Second away? Like a three times replay. As we get better at this, maybe we can have replays and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, he timed it with the duct tape. His health was going down. He goes for the the final punch, the slam dunk, if you will. And it's like he trips midair and falls and the ball goes into the stands. It's a valiant <laughs> effort that unfortunately came up short to win the game. Um, that would have sent it to a game five, which would have been equally as good. But those guys are even keeled. That's a great third place game. And you know, if you get matched up with Marrow or O'Mullen in World War Doe gameplay, you're probably in for it. Absolutely. And here we are coming up in to the, the last set of players. That's right, grand final here, both rocking Mammoth. And if you noticed, they're very shy to drop cards in the beginning because sometimes in these games, whoever drops first loses. It's like when they tell you in an argument, if you're the first to speak, you're gonna lose. Hmm. They don't wanna be the first to speak. Interesting but seeing a Catling happy. gun. Seeing a, lot of, mm -hmm. seeing a lot of cards you don't typically see from pro, pro players chosen in their first deck, like those Mrs. Rex. And there's the Mini Mander again. Be happy. Mm -hmm. Has had a lot of success from this Mini Mander. First snipe. Oh yeah, first snipe. First snipe of the tournament. So in that first exchange, I love how I'm like providing insight. This is, I sound so intellectually great at this game, but I'm really not. <laughs> um, the top left tower took a bunch of damage in the opening exchange. And in a play 
of this caliber of players, that could be the difference. Just saying. You absolutely do sound like you know what you're talking about. It's a joy for me. I'm I'm in the audience right now. I'm just kind of sitting here having a good time Get watching these two mammoths tusk toward the tower. He gets the charge first. He's going in. Ooh, oh. Well timed. This is this is mirror <laughs> gameplay. There's the Catling gun. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sweaty realizing that Catling gun needs to go before he starts stacking them on him. Which I see the benefit to the Catling gun when you add the Disco Ray to the Mammoth. You already have support down there to take out the Mammoth. Good Mammoth defense. Mm -hmm. And if you can get two Catling guns up, it starts to get easier to put three Catling guns up. It's just like the Mini Mander. Uh, there's a lot of snowball cards that have existed in this game for a long time that nobody's messed with because we all used to love cheerleaders. Am I right or am I Amen. right? Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Speaking of cheerleaders, I wonder if we'll see any Van Gun play. I know it's Sweaty who's known for his Van Gun play, but I'm not expecting to see it in uh, pro, pro matches. Van Gun's a big risk. Yeah, I can either confirm or deny if we see a Van Gun. Perfect. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I mentioned before this is my first time watching any of these replays, and it really is when you're watching people at this level of gameplay, it's almost hard to even digest it all while talking to somebody and trying to see what's going on. So it's really great having you. Not only you're a little bit of coaching here, but just it seems like you've already gone through these replays and really, uh, this just this is phenomenal, man. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but like I said in the beginning, the difference was that first exchange would be happy unloaded on that tower. And now he's just going for broke. He's going to take it down. There it is. There it is. One tower is all he needed. Um, it's not a 3-0 win. It's not that pretty of a win, but it's a 1-0 win in the grand final. And, and when they're both running Mammoth like that, that's really what you're going for because you're not really trying to focus on stopping the Mammoth. You're trying to focus on getting your Mammoth to the tower before they do. That's not entirely true. Hold up. Um, Be Happy's deck was designed to do one, two things. One, send the Mammoth in. Two, defend against everything. And that's why he's running it again. So like you see, he's got the Mammoth. That's his offense. But he has Snipe for defense, Dome for defense, Disc for defense, Catling Gun for defense. I think you're getting the, the drift. Which, Absolutely, and he even plays Mammoth defensively defense. sometimes, it seems, because the Mammoth Freeze can be so powerful, but she walks so slow down the field, it allows for something like that to happen where she gets caught. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised we didn't see a Witch Drop on that Mammoth, by the way. Hmm. I he had it in that. his hand. He had it in his hand. He could have punished that. And he put the dome down, so he was definitely thinking about it. And like you said, snipe the mini mander. Yep, I see that quite often. A lot of people snipe the mini mander, and the mini mander did die to snipe, correct? Here comes the catling stack. Yep, protecting him so he can cap his barrel. But Yeti Lings is always so good. <laughs> like, Absolutely. It. Even Repairman Dan with his low damage did a ton of damage with it being doubled from from the chilling effect. All right, but he is to the third phase of the killbot now, mm -hmm. which means the disco ray is getting used on mammoth and the killbot. Mhm. Mm well, I think just the killbot. Did he have mammoth? Oh, I'm saying now he has two things to worry about with his disco ray. He has to use it on the killbot and he also has to be ready to have it in his hand when the mammoth shows up. No, I'm saying sweaty has the Oh, you're saying sweaty has to or be happy. You know yes. what? I'm so confused. <laughs> oh, good. This. Yeah, Be Happy is having to defend against the Killbot. And does Sweaty have a Mammoth as well? No, Sweaty just has Killbot. Gotcha. Okay, I thought Sweaty... That, that's the confusion. I thought Sweaty still had the Mammoth in his deck. I have been watching mainly the hand of Be Happy. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the deck that Sweaty had massive success with against O'Mullen. So he knew he was down 1-0... He needs to go to a tried and true strat, so that's what he's doing here. You're on your own after this. And so far, pretty good, man. These these have been all even exchanges. There's the defensive mammoth, because just that mm -hmm. little bit of freeze damage can help you get rid of a kill bot. Yeah, people forget that she's good at everything. Because of that freeze, the immune to freeze is great, but also it's not her damage output that's strong, but just being able to freeze something like a tank arena or a kill bot can be a, a, a use for her that you might not expect. You're talking like people use Tank Arena? Oh, right, I know. 
<laughs> Yo, like people are out there using Tank Arena. They tried. They, if they made her six dough, I think you might see it more. But here we go. Killer Croc. They reduced Tom, yep. Chompers. They reduced Tank Arena to six dough at one point, but then they raised her again when they added the shield, which was supposed to be a shield as long as she was above 50% health, but they changed it to when she only had a shield above 80% health. Guess it still wasn't enough. Man, look at this. Killbot. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see the mammoth drop on the right side to take care of that kill bot. Uh, be happy showing no regard for it. Yeah, He's sweaty shredded that mammoth. But Another as you see, he's bot. got the stack up now. Yep, well, he's got one. three Catling guns back there. Two Catling guns. And Sweaty is now working on a brand new strategy that he hadn't been doing all game. He's got two mini manders. Uh, be happy had done a good job of mitigating that success with the snipe, but Sweaty's trying to get it rolling. The mini mander is such a great card because it does not behave like a Grievel or a heal bot where it follows the commander. It actually works like another commander. So it goes immediately where you point and doesn't follow the commander in its pathing. So you're really able to dodge chompers. You're able to dodge airstrikes. You're able to use it like another commander. Mm -hmm. Three Catling guns down to two. Chompers about to take out the witch. This is a lot of mini manders. Sweaty's got it going on. Where's the rage? Here There's comes. the rage. Here it comes. Oh. Man, it's like butter, right? Oh. It's like cutting through butter. It's <laughs> insane. It just shows up. It goes from some damage to butter damage. Exactly. Exactly. So game one to two. Oh my gosh. To be happy because Mammoth is king. Gain two to Sweaty, because this Killbot deck, he's having a ton of success with. So if you're confused as to what you might want to use in World War though, I would steal this one. Wicked success with it. There was the snipe on the Minimander. It does take out the Minimander when they're evenly leveled. Because you got to take them out. You can't just let someone stack Minimanders. It's like using the negative trade of the Discombobulator Ray on the Witch, even though you don't feel bad. It's worth it. It's worth it to use Disco Ray to get rid of that curse damage. Maybe it's worth it to snipe the Minimander if there's not a Witch in the deck. Now, this is such an interesting deck by Be Happy. I'm a big believer in any competitive game. If you bring cards that are a mixture of odd that people haven't seen, it confuses them and makes them play stupid. You got Be Happy with a Bunker, a Miss Rex, a Sheriff, a Snipe. It's kind of like a hodgepodge of cards. Would you agree? It really seems like a mess <laughs> when you look at it. I mean, Mrs. Rex makes such a mess as it is, and maybe he's bringing Sheriff Justice so that he can get the commander away from those eggs and try and control the commander but it does see oh and you just got bunker yeah it does that hodgepodge is the name of this deck there's the sniper right. on the mini mander again stopping the, the barrel cap he's got me and you guessing at it but you're 100 right when miss rex is laying the eggs the sheriff is yanking the enemy commander around and the bunker is dealing impressive damage just like the mini mander the bunker does impressive damage and that extended range makes it really helpful as well but again, what has Sweaty done so well with his kill bots? And there's another one. <laughs> DJ Khaled over there. Another <laughs> and one. And another one. Another one. Kill bot. <laughs> we the best kill bot. <laughs> Dang, son. Uh, where'd you find this? On the bunker, right? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What was that? Dang, son. Where'd you find this? <laughs> Oh my gosh. So this bunker placement had me scratching my head at first, but at the same time, Sweaty was able to cap that barrel that normally is targeted by the bunker with no problem. So he brought it back. So these Yetilings maybe couldn't be a factor. He could still do damage. Like, I don't know, man, but let's see if it works out for him. Interesting too, that he discoed the kill bot so far away because he was able to reach it through that extended range from the bunker. Mm-hmm. He went in the bunker while he had rage. It seems like the bunker doesn't keep the rage damage. That's interesting. I've not tried that before. No, bunker doesn't. And if you want a little bit of old history in this game, bunker was one of the first cards that was nerfed. Um, they made it have less health, do less damage, and they took Yetilings down in cost because Yetilings was the direct counter for an overpowered card. 
Absolutely. I do think I remember Yetlings may, uh, they may have had more nerfs and buffs than, or, or more changes than any other card in the game. They've been 4 do, 3 do, 2 do. When I first started playing the game, it was uh, Lam Nguyen playing with the Bunker and Repairman Dan and just this extremely repetitive strat. And Piranha Tanks was one of the first cards. When, how long have you been playing? Oh, geez. Probably since, uh, probably this whole year. Probably all 2020. Good game from Sweaty. What? Wow. He gave up? Isn't that interesting? He's recognizing he has no shot, but there's no tower damage going down. There really wasn't wow. a shot there, though. There really wasn't a shot there with, with the poison being on both sides. Yeah, but he had killed by it. I, you know, like that one's hard to digest because you have to realize in a poison match, if someone has killbot, you're picking them to win. But be happy one with the bunker and poison. It was that hodgepodge deck that you talked about. At the end, we saw the the hodgepodge cards is what gave him the win. He had Mrs. Rex. He had, he had Sheriff down. He had his bunker down, and he was just able to stay on top of Sweaty, and away from the killbot. Bunker's such an interesting card. Oh, he's got Nightfall. See, so Sweaty lost to Be Happy's deck. He's bringing Nightfall to make Bunker kind of useless. Let's see if this works out in his favor. Oh, and oh, I see you Clown see Car in his hand. Oh, he's got Clown Car. He's got Clown Car and duct tape and invisibility. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, though, this is an incredibly risky bring. Oh, he's pushing. That's a smart move there. Uh, it didn't matter. I uh, sweat. This is like, this is the final match. And Sweaty is bringing Clown Car into final match. You gotta love his confidence, because that's a gambling man. It really is. If the car opens, good game. If the car doesn't open, good game. <laughs> good game. <laughs> we got Nightfall on Justice, taking a beating from the Caveman. But the nice thing about this deck is Nightfall doesn't totally cripple it for Be Happy, because he's got Mrs. Rex. You can see. He's making a probe level push, stealing the barrel, because what he knows, he can't let that Rex touch his tower. Absolutely. Good call cap in his barrel. And Nightfall actually benefits Be Happy quite a bit, because Rex benefits from Nightfall. Mrs. Rex benefits from Nightfall. Uh, the only thing that really doesn't is his bunker. He's not using barrel, so he's not going to be capping his barrel with Minimander. But that was Dude, a nice so egg takeout. The invisibility, that clown car. We couldn't see it. There it is. Uh, Disco, there's uh -uh. the end. That's it. <laughs> oh. What? He push it, Sweaty. Push what? it. What? Push away. Push away. Uh, oh, Man, he was pushing the Disco Ray. That's a first. I've not seen that before. Dude, a snipe. A snipe to take it out. Be happy with probably one of the clutches plays at a tournament there. I don't know what would have happened if that clown car had popped. But like that would have been game. game. Sweaty needs a heal so badly. He needs to stop. Oh, nice disco ray. Be happy use the snipe. No. Okay. That's a rebound actually. Sweaty's still in this one. I love how we're like watching with bated breath. We're just I'm, like, I'm, gonna... I can't really talk right now. I'm leaning. If you could see me, I'm actually like leaning forward, clenching my chair right now. Oh, dude, Rex. Rex oh. on the right hand side. Oh. I would say Disco Ray is the most used card from the pros. It's one of the OP cards because there really isn't a counter to it. What's the counter? Spell grounding rod? That's not a counter. Right. There really is no there counter. There it is. There it is. Wow. There's your victor, everybody. Be happy. Be happy. Seed, Dark Horse, and for my money, the best in the game. Be happy came in, and he took down everybody in his way. Left no, nothing up to chance, nothing up for debate. If you don't think he's the best in the game, I got news for you. You're wrong, man. You're wrong. You Be are. happy is the official greatest in the game. Keep talking. I'm going to sneak back here and get my flute for everybody. We're going to be blessed with possibly the best victory flute in World War II history. This one's going to travel all the way to Germany for my man, Be Happy. Be happy, ladies and gentlemen, the official Woo! king of World War II. Gaggio, I am riding high, living the dream. Life is good. I can't thank you enough. 
for putting this tournament on. I mean, personally, not that it's like benefited me in any way besides giving me the best day of my life. This was like the Super Bowl for me. This is this is so great. You know, in a lot of ways, it was the Super Bowl. We got to see Moroku Ak and Ole Mullen go down in a great third place match. And then two underdogs who probably nobody had much respect for or the respect they deserved in Sweaty and Be Happy. I 100% did not expect dogs. either of them to be at the end. You're totally right. I did not expect to see B. I would have picked, <laughs> I, I would have picked a Yourself? lot of people before I picked them. Not that they're not incredible, but I'm just familiar with looking at O'Mullen and Mero and punisher and all these other players that just and mick Holge, where was just really surprising and i can't wait for you to do this again we'll bring another tournament very soon i'm sure everyone's going to have their eyes peeled for it i'm just going to keep doing cash prizes because you know that that's what makes it more at stakes and more fun yeah hey man I can we all need cash that. right now <laughs> yeah why not get that cheddar man play world war though you can actually make money and that makes it pro <laughs> well thank you for inviting me to this this has been I've said it too many times. I've had a great, I've had a great day. I'm just going to go continue having a great day. I can't thank you enough, man. I, I'll of course leave your links. To, I got a way to send this off. You ready? Yes, sir. I just got to do this real quick to the Batmobile. <laughs> thank you, man. To all you dope people out there. I love you. God, you love you. Thank you, man. Don't need ID, we drinking for free, reppin' the tea.